Do you truly, in your heart of hearts, truly believe that this is a human being? This? Without a doubt. Without a doubt? Yes. This is a dolphin fetus. So let me- Without a doubt, a dolphin so fetus is a human being. This is a human fetus. Look how similar they look. That amazing clip was from a debate featuring Charlie Kirk and comedian Ben Glebe. And the reason why it's so incredible is because Ben Glebe sets up a trap and Charlie Kirk unknowingly walks right into it. And the result is just humiliating for Charlie Kirk. Now, there's a lot more to be said about that exchange. But before I talk more about this, I do want to share the extended version of that clip so you can see kind of what happens in the lead up to that moment and shortly afterwards. Uh, so uh, enjoy. At eight weeks, we have tails. Uh, at eight weeks, an em uh, 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 embryo has tails. Do humans have tails, Charlie? I I'm sorry, what? Serious question. Do human beings have tails? I'm not exactly sure the essence of the Do question. Do human beings have tails? Do you have a tail? You know, I, I have never met anyone with a tail. I'm not exactly sure the essence. Exactly. The but fetuses have tails. Kind of proves that at that phase, they are not a human being. They got tails. Humans don't have tails. We're not dinosaurs. Let me even show you a photo, if I may, okay? Do you truly, in your heart of hearts, truly believe that this is a human being? This? Without a doubt. Without a doubt? Yes. This is a dolphin fetus. So let me- Without a doubt, a dolphin so fetus is a human being. This is a human fetus. Look how similar they look, but quite different. Dolphin, you just confirmed that a dolphin, in, in life, do you confuse dolphins for human babies often? So let me you ask you a You go to SeaWorld and you're like, someone's got human babies in that aquarium. Get the human babies out of the aquarium. Well, you labeled it as a human fetus. No, so I did, did not. That dishonestly. No, I did not. But I didn't let, label it as anything. Let me, but you, let me say let human me, fetus on there. Let me ask you a question, though. So let's, let's hold up those two pictures again. Sure. Is there a moral difference between the dolphin and the baby? At this stage, no. No, you no, just, no, no, and you no, just no. confirmed that. Let me ask you. Perfection. That was sheer perfection. Uh, what we just saw was a debate tactic that I want more leftists to use because Ben Glebe is kind of using Charlie Kirk's tactic against him. Because if you watch longer on, and I'll link to the full debate down below for anyone who wants to see it, Charlie Kirk, once he kind of gets knocked off of his feet, he gets back up and he then uses the same tactic that Ben Glebe just used on him. Because what Ben Glebe did was he kind of presented Charlie Kirk with uh, a common sense question, right? This is a fetus, and the argument is that life begins at conception for Charlie Kirk. So, of course, if he is given an image of what he believes is a human fetus, he's going to answer. But in answering and knowing that he's going to answer, you kind of prove Ben's point that mm, does life really begin at conception if you can't tell the difference between a dolphin fetus and a human fetus? Isn't this just a clump of cells at this point? Now, the way that Charlie Kirk rebounds from that is he asks, okay, well, is that human fetus that you showed me, is that dead or alive? Ben Glebe then says, it's dead. Now, that was a bait as well, and Charlie Kirk kind of got him into a corner by saying that, because it's not dead, but the point is that does life begin at conception? That's the point of contention that they're both arguing over. So to say that it's dead and to bait Ben Glebe into saying, yes, it's dead, you kind of prove your point as well. So I don't necessarily know that this was a blowout for Charlie Kirk or for Ben Glebe overall, but that particular moment was really, really insightful. Because one, it shows how successful leftists can be when they replicate the same debate tactics of right-wingers. And two, it's important because what Ben Glebe did there was masterfully attack the root, the core of Charlie Kirk's argument. Now, Charlie Kirk goes on uh, to explain his thoughts on abortion, but really, if we could find one moment in the debate where he summarizes his entire worldview about how he believes life begins at conception, uh, it's, it's this clip that we're going to show you. Uh, now, Basically, if you establish that life begins at conception and you accept that notion, then of course, if that is indeed life, if a fetus is life, then of course, killing it is tantamount to killing a fully developed human being once you kind of accept that premise. So take a look at what Charlie Kirk says, and then I'll tell you why this whole pro-life, this quote-unquote pro-life thing that he's trying to espouse here, doesn't actually add up if we're logically consistent. Take a look. This really kind of goes down to the question of when does human life begin? When does personhood begin? And the science of embryology says very clearly that life, human life, begins at conception. Now, speaking non-scientifically as a moral argument, we have overseen the slaughter of our fellow citizens over the last couple decades. 
This is a genocide, dare I say a holocaust of our citizens that has occurred since Roe versus Wade. You talked about women. Well, just statistically, half of the 62 million abortions since Roe versus Wade are 31 million women that never had the chance to live. So first of all, I just want to say that regardless if abortion is legal or not, they're still going to continue to happen. Banning abortions is not going to lead to less abortions. Instead of them being safe and legal now, they'll just be unsafe and illegal. But by banning abortions, you're not going to get rid of abortions entirely. But to get to Charlie Kirk's argument here, he claims that that right there, that fetus, that's human life. And it's so important that we protect that human life that we violate a woman's bodily autonomy. Even if she doesn't want that clump of cells in her, well, you know, that's, that's life. If you don't think it's life, well, then at least it's going to develop into a human being at some point. So he's taking what he believes is a pro-life stance. But if you take that pro-life position and you extend it, then logically it should also follow that Charlie Kirk believes that under no circumstances should a state have the death penalty. Under no circumstances should war ever be supported. He should be a pacifist. He should also support medical advancements that save lives, such as the COVID-19 vaccines. He should also be very pro-life when it comes to supporting refugees and asylum seekers. He should also make sure that no human being on the planet goes hungry and that everyone has basic health care. And certainly the most pro-life stance of all means that we do everything in our power, dedicate every single penny that we have to make sure that there is a planet for future generations and we have to combat climate change. That is the ultimate test of who is and isn't pro-life. If you don't believe that there should be a habitable planet for future generations, then you're not pro-life. That's the logical extension of this pro-life stance. But that's not what Charlie Kirk believes. In fact, he disagrees with all of the things that I just listed. So it's weird that you're pro-life when it comes to fetuses, but that's where you draw the line. I mean, certainly, if you're going to accept this notion, which I do not, but if you're going to accept that life begins at conception, then wouldn't you accept that a fully developed life, a child who's sentient, who can think, who can feel pain, is also deserving of life? So why stop supporting life after the fetus is born? Either Charlie Kirk doesn't actually care about life because he does want to control a woman's body, or he doesn't really care either way. And like many Republican politicians, he's just using this as a wedge issue to slide through a really insidious right-wing economic agenda that disproportionately benefits elites. What is this really about? Because if you say that you're pro-life, why do you arbitrarily draw the line at fetuses, but once the baby is born, we don't care if that baby deals with war and global anthropogenic climate change. We don't care if that baby goes hungry and doesn't have health care. Why draw the line there? The entire pro-life movement, and it's a misrepresentation to even call them pro-life, the entire pro-life movement is based on a farce. Clips like this are so persuasive because Charlie Kirk, he's just a talking head. He has a lot of rehearsed talking points, but Ben Glee, being a comedian, he was able to kind of knock him off balance, kind of prove how silly his point is. So overall, I think that this was really, really incredible to see, and this is something that you can easily replicate uh, on a personal level. If you have a really anti-abortion uncle or someone in your family who's anti-abortion, and please don't call them pro-life, call them anti-abortion because they've shown time and again that they're not pro-life, they're just anti-abortion. But if you have someone in your family that's anti-abortion, you can do the same thing. Show them a picture of, uh, I don't know, an elephant fetus, and will they be able to tell the difference? Probably not. Probably not. So where they choose to arbitrarily believe life begins, like that entire notion that anti-abortionists base their worldview on, it can easily be dismantled just like that. And a comedian did it in less than 30 seconds to a right-wing hack who's been trained to debate people, who knows which rhetoric is effective to use. So if it works on Charlie Kirk, it's going to work on someone you know, and perhaps you can use this same tactic and change somebody's mind. Girly Mike Fettuccini needs your support on Patreon.
What a loser. Visit patreon.com slash humanist report to support the low ratings humanist report. Sad. My views are much higher.